We're now in one of the Colo rooms where the actual computations that are used to handle the queries coming into Wolfram and Alpha take place. And with me is Roger, who's going to explain a little bit about how the many cores in this cluster actually handle a query. All right. Well, if you follow me, then um, here we have a couple of racks. Um, and within these racks, you see there are two U units. Each of the two U units contain uh, uh, four boards. And each of the boards have two processors with four cores in each. So eight cores for a board and 32 cores for a unit. So how many cores are there in this uh, pair of uh, clusters? Um, it's about 4,000 in this, this little area that we see here. Now you're not taking up much room in the space here. Is that uh, simply because you don't need the space? Right. Well, these are these are not boards that you normally these are not units that you normally buy. They're from Dallas Supercomputer Division, so they're packed very densely. Um, so they, they draw quite a lot of power. Um, to, so even though space-wise they're kind of concentrated, they do use up a lot of power, maybe about a kilowatt each. Wow. So you're saying that the two clusters in this room are actually using all the power and air conditioning that was, this room was originally designed for? Yeah. This this facility has two data centers, two data center rooms. And this little collection here uses up all the cooling and all the power for now, this data center. Now, is it the case that when a query comes into Wolfram Alpha, it's handled effectively by one of the computers in this rack, or is it a much, much more complicated uh, process? It's it's quite a bit more complicated. It gets farmed out. So each of the little pods that you see was probably a result returned from one computation. And those can be farmed out on completely different nodes. So if I ask is it the case that my answer may come as a result of computations calculated on many of these yeah. cores? Yeah, and also it's very data heavy, so there are other things requested too. So you need data very close to your nodes. So there are many uh, database nodes included in one of those racks okay. you know, as well. So there are service nodes. Let's just thing. move down a little bit because it will give a more interesting background for the camera, I think. Oh. So I can see here that you've also got uh, are these hard drives. Uh, are you storing much data in these these, these systems? Yeah. So the, the databases here, they have uh, you know all, all together, it's hundreds of terabytes. You know, but uh, you know, for each one of those racks here, I think we have like um, I'm guessing there's about four database nodes, four service nodes, four web nodes, that kind of thing. So which are redundant. So if one would fail, the other one takes over at slightly decreased capacity. So there are multiple copies of the databases spread across the storage here. Yeah. There are multiple copies in each rack. There are multiple, even more copies in the whole thing, and there's more copies on all the other colos that we have as well. How big a, a problem is it to choreograph what's going on in all these machines? It must be one of the most difficult things. Well, you 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 better have it severely automated, and um, the monitoring of that also needs to be up to speed. Now, what happens when a single one of these machines goes down? Uh, nothing. It just keeps going. You know, if, if one machine, uh, another machine will take over for its place. So we, it can withstand a lot of failures. And do you have any sense of uh, how much computing power we've got in this room? Um, and is it uh, uh, comparable, for example, to a normal large data center, or is this something more powerful? Well, what we do is a little bit different. From a normal data center, run IT loads. And a normal IT load doesn't use CPU power very much. It's very light on the, on the CPU. It's all disk. This one uses a lot of disk, but it's really intense on the CPU power. So this is more akin to a supercomputer center. And this one is a little smaller. We also have another center, which, uh, you know, is bigger than this, but they're all in the, in the range of a top 50 supercomputer. So how many centers are actually running Wolfram Alpha at the moment? Um, um, I think about five at this point. And this one will be one of the bigger ones? This one is one of the bigger ones. It's not the biggest, but it's one of the bigger ones. Great. Now, I believe you've also been working on some methods for visualizing the processing that's going on here. Right. Can we go and take a look at that? Sure. 